It's September 28th, and this is episode 5, part 2 of Plane Savers. Down Under. And welcome to part 2 of episode 5 at the Australian National Aviation Museum. We are looking, going to be looking at some photos of some very rare aircraft that are in various stages waiting to be restored and I think you'll find them very interesting. The museum is lucky enough to be custodian of the very first aircraft built in Australia, the Doigan Flyer. As you can see it's of a traditional box kite design of that time. You might recall from part one the, the this view of the centre section of a Lincoln bomber. Uh, as you can see it's got a G registration so it's a British one not an Australian one. Uh, the museum holds more parts. Um, there is the tail section which is almost looks like a chicken coop and it also has the nose section which is currently being held by Sir Peter Jackson in New Zealand. This is a particularly rare aircraft. This is a genuine DC-2 it was originally purchased for Eastern Airlines and their great, I think, white fleet or silver fleet that was to be proposed and fly in the States. It was impressed into the US Army Air Force, then into the RAAF, and then up flying here in Australia. It's one of the original ones with the very um, narrow cord vertical fin. It was the 32nd aircraft built and is the third oldest Douglas air, airliner in existence. Unfortunately it will stay static as the centre section is has severe corrosion. You will note that it's painted in the colours of Uvia KLM's aircraft that ran second in the McRobinson London to Sydney air race. It was a normal transport flying a normal scheduled route, dropping passengers and freight off and picking them up. The Comet that won it was a dedicated racing aircraft. Roscoe Turner, Turner came third in a um, Boeing 247 transport. Another historic aircraft, this time the de Havilland Heron prototype. We now go over to the hangar of Briggs Aerospace Proprietary Limited. Actually, Briggs is the chairman of the museum and his organisation takes much of the restoration work for the museum as well as production of uh, or restoration of other aircraft. Here we see a number of Kitty Hawks in various stages of restorations including wings sitting in jigs. You can see the base or the uh, bottom of the fuselage next to the upper fuselage here. This is a Wacket trainer that is being built up by the volunteers of the museum from scratch. You'll remember the wings we saw in the um, previous hangar. Uh, this is being put together solely by the volunteers and the standard of workmanship is superb. The blue aircraft here is a de Havilland Canada chipmunk and the red one is obviously a tiger moth. And again we came to come to another very unique aircraft. This was completed as a DC-3 not a C-47 and in converted. It runs a Wright Cyclone 1100 horsepower motors instead of the 1830s. It was operated by ANA, Australian National Airlines, and registered as VH-ANH. 
So it's this in itself is a very rare aircraft and a lot of work is going into um, repair it. It's the third oldest DC-3 in Australia and one of three original civilian factory built DC-3 aircraft. As Wayne said in the first part, uh, the museum has all CAC and GAF aircraft. This is the last aircraft built by CAA. It was built by the apprentices. It's called the CA-36, but its name is the Pasmani PL-4. And it's airworthy and has flown recently. And again, this uh, brake press is 85 years old and was originally used by CAC in the manufacture of all the aircraft in this museum. This, we are now back in the uh, main hangar of the museum. This is a Percival Proctor, a interwar aircraft designed and built by Edgar Percival, who was an Australian. We have many Australians who are famous in aviation, Harry Hawker uh, and many others. You'll also notice there's an Oster tucked in there underneath there as well. And here again is the GAF Mirage 3E. And this is not a CAC or GAF aircraft, but a very significant aircraft in Australia. This is the Victor Air Tourer. And yes, the company who made Victor lawn mowers made Victor Air Tourers. From this is derived the CT4 air trainer that was used by the RWF in basic flying training. Here is the museum's ferry battle. This gives us an opportunity to have a good look at the wing fold mechanism on this aircraft because not only does it fold but it folds backwards parallel with the fuselage rather than up over the top forming a triangle like many carrier borne aircraft do. So we've taken a few pictures of the linkages to give you an idea how it does that. Then there are pictures of the cockpit of the um, uh, Firefly, so you can have a good look at that. In keeping with CAC aircraft, this is the CAC Wirraway, derived from the NA-16. This is something I'd really like to um, filch and uh, put in the caravan and take back to Caboolture with me. This is the um, fuselage or the nose fuselage of the Beaufort bomber, similar to what we're restoring in Caboolture. This one is fully done with all of the um, instruments, etc., where ours will eventually end up one day. And now one of my favourite aircraft, and I think many aviation enthusiasts in Australia probably think the same way. This is the Bristol Bowfighter, the companion to the Beaufort. This is the fighter strike version, um, or rather not a strike version, but more a um, knock them out of the sky and sink them out of the sea and everything else ship. Uh, the Japanese call it Whispering Death because of its sleeve um, cylinder engines, the uh, Bristol Hercules, she'd come down out of the sky and all of a sudden there was a lot of um, unpleasantness happening around you. This bow fighter is unique in the world in that it is the only one where the engines can be fired up and run.
and uh, we have a Kyra again being restored or it looks very well restored already and also above that is the tiger moth in RAAF training colours. Various engines are spread around the museum, some cut away like this one. Um, this is the CAC Sabre again. Uh, this gives you a chance to have a look also inside the cockpit of this aircraft. Again, not a significant, or rather not a CAC or GAF aircraft, but as we've seen in previous episodes, a significant aircraft for the RAN, the de Havilland Sea Venom. You'll recall when we were at Haas in, I think, episode two, we spoke about the escape module from the F-111 where the crew, when they bailed out, came out in a module rather than through injection seats. This is the module that we were talking about and it will give you a good idea exactly what comes apart from the aircraft. This is the original hangar of Lord and Lady Casey. Lord Casey was our Governor General at one stage and he was a bit of an aviation nut. So this is, his hangar's been bought here and including in it is his DH-60. We have the no nose section now of an answered airlines Boeing 737-200 that's long been retired from airline use. This will give you an idea of both the how it looks with all the walls attached and the seats therein and then when some of the internal fittings have been removed so you can have a look at what's hidden underneath the aircraft or underneath the um, internal skin and decor of the aircraft. We then go up into the cockpit for a look at the two seat cockpit of a what late 60s 70s era aircraft and then we have a look at the JT-8 engines. These are the uh, JT-8D engines that are powered the 737-200 that we saw outside and you, again you get a good idea of the changes in technology that are compared to what is out there today. The museum also has a TAA DC-9 simulator. Down to Melbourne. I hope you enjoyed your uh, visit to the Australian National Aviation Museum. North, and we're today Until we're next time, we'll see you museum. around. Down.